I'm the great-great-granddaughter of Mary Francisco, one of the best Pomo basket weavers that ever lived. I never met my great-grandma. And I didn't have any living, weaving teachers. When I was nine years old, I went on a school camping trip. We had a presenter come talk about baskets, and they showed some of theirs, and they talked about their type. And that night, we camped under a willow tree, and I had a dream. I was walking to a house that's not there anymore, and my great-grandma was there. And she told me to sit on her lap. And she put her hands like this, and I put my hands like that. And she said, you know, you can weave. You have my hands, you can weave. I woke up the next day, and that willow tree that we were camping under looked very different. I was able to look at this willow tree with basket maker's eyes. So I harvested. I wove a little basket that day, and I've been harvesting and weaving ever since then. We are in Northern California couple hours north of San Francisco Bay Area. This is my home reservation, this <laughs> is my home rancheria. And this is really what we consider the heartland of Pomo country. Pomo peoples were not ever one nation, one tribe. That is a convenient term that anthropologists gave to what were really many independent peoples. We all live in what's today Sonoma County, Mendocino County, Lake County, California. Pomo people made baskets using more types of weaving techniques than anybody else ever has. And that was possible in part because it's an area that is one of the most botanically diverse in the world. Baskets were the essential tool of life. From birth to death, from hunting and fishing to gathering and cooking, Pomo baskets are the best in the world. And that's throughout time and throughout space. And the basis of that judgment is really the sheer technical virtuosity 